I got the big homie, comedian, actor, activist. He's on Twitter and Instagram, at Comedian Shane. Make sure you guys check out his website, I Am Shane. Everybody give it up. Homie Shane's in the building. Yo, yo, what's going on, man? I'm glad you put in activist, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I try to study. You know what happened? Here's what happened. Like Renee says, uh, how you feel about having Shane on, on the show? And I was like, who the hell is that? And then I Googled it, and I was like, oh, that dude. I've seen this dude on everything. He's a crazy-ass dude. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I, that's weird, man. I'm in, I'm, that's where I'm at right now. Like, I, I mean, some people recognize me when they see me, but most of the time it's like, who is this? Is it a Chinese dude? And then they see I'm not, and then they go, what? But, uh, no, I know what you mean, man. But, no, um, it's funny. I, I saw that thing on BET with the, um, Jesse Williams, and he, he, he spit some, you know, pro-black knowledge thing. Yeah. And uh, it was funny that people were like, yo, man, he's like a younger you. It's like people don't realize I've been in the mix with that for a long time. And it's just, you know, it didn't get the same play. Cause, so now I think people are getting aware. And just like you said, Independence Day, it really ain't, if that ain't for me either. All you know, right. I mean, that was real what you said. What you said ain't for me either. Independence from what? This? You know, America need to get themselves together before they talk that to me at least. Look, dog, like dudes out, dudes out barbecuing and getting drunk today. Like Juneteenth was a few weeks ago. Crickets, <laughs> you know what I mean? Ain't nobody do nothing. You know what I mean? Like that. If anything, yeah, that's the real day. But you know, whatever. Um, listen, to it, man. So you travel the country, and this is what I was talking about earlier. I was talking about Kevin Durant and his move and all, all these things. Oh man, um, you ever, that's you ever, a huge move. You ever worked in OKC? Yeah, you ever, yeah, I have. I have to. Right you ever worked in the in the Bay Area? Yeah, both. Yeah, if you had both. if you had a choice of which one to live in, <laughs> where would you live in? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I would I would live in the Bay, but um, OKC was all right. It was a good. It was. A, I mean, the crowd was good. I stayed there for a day, but I'm I'm telling you, I think that he's put a huge dent in OKC. He oh, a huge dent in it. He's crippled him. I think that yeah, and Sacramento is going to be even more difficult. But I don't know, man. Cleveland came back and. Like they they got in that ass. I mean, let's be real. So, um, I still think it's gonna be Cleveland's gonna still be a powerhouse. I call I this mean, the, even, even I, with that. I call them the get back team. Like Cleveland got. I mean, Steph and them boys got to get back at LeBron. KD got to get back at LeBron for a couple of years ago. So it's like the enemy of your enemy is my enemy. So let's join together and be <laughs> friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's get these dudes. Right. But, uh, yeah, but, I mean, that was one of those moves where, now, is he going to get the same kind of uh, scrutiny that um, LeBron got? That's so funny. LeBron got a lot of scrutiny. But they you, went in on him, like, LeBron, I want to kill you. I want to rip your arm off and beat you with the wet part. I want to smack your family. I want to kick your kids down the steps. All that stuff. Well, KD get that. But, no, because you know how it goes when you're the first you get the you get the most right. So LeBron, it's like it's like Hammer in the rap game, right? Remember, Hammer was a sellout, and you know he get the gas face. And now, if you don't have endorsements, you whack. You know what I mean? That was the thing. Hammer was selling out and all that stuff back then, but he took it for everybody in the beginning. So everybody after him gets it pretty easy. So I think Kevin Durant's gonna get it. You know, he's gotten it easy so far, and I think he's gonna get it even. I mean, they're gonna hate a little bit today and be mad today, but then basketball's gonna start. You understand what I'm saying? So whatever. And you say, and then that'll all end. Right, right. And I don't know, man. I, I don't think you're going to get it at all. I think that they was already hating on LeBron. I think that, they, you know, saying he's whiny, he's whatever, but he's a three-time champion. So, I don't, I mean, whatever they want to think. But I think KD's going to get it a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah, he ain't just gonna, a little. He's going to get a lot of scrutiny. Yeah. He's I mean, I'm, I ain't mad at him. I ain't mad at him. But after they basketball players play their heart out, I love the NBA. I'm more of a UFC. I like UFC and boxing. That's my number one and number two sports. But I'm telling you, basketball, I love basketball, but it's like, you know, after they use you up, they don't care about you. So, I mean, I think he, you got to you gotta think about yourself, too. I mean, you think about the city, but you got to think about yourself, too, and your family. Right. He's comedian, actor, activist. Uh, he's, he's Shang, at Comedian Shang on Twitter and Instagram. And follow yeah. and check out his website, imshang.com. Uh, now, finish this sentence for me. Black slash urban stand up comedy in twenty sixteen is uh, uh separated. Word. Separated yeah, separated. In and what I way? Think that it, I think that um Hollywood only kind of picks a couple black comics at a time to mm. elevate and whereas they do with white comics, they'll elevate twenty, thirty comics to put them in movies and films and stuff. 
progress, and there's only like Kevin Hart, Mike Epps. There's other people like the Bruce Bruce's of the world, but they they pretty much elevate one or two of us at a time. Yeah. And so uh, that's part of it. And in 2016, I, unfortunately, the black audience, uh, it's us. Is We gravitate to the stuff that is not as positive for us. So uh, if you're a comic that's trying to you know, spit a little knowledge, I, don't get it wrong. I'm grimy as hell on stage. Right. I say I cuss, I whatever. But, I mean, I'm trying to drop knowledge throughout the set, you know, and try to, you know, big us up throughout the set. And I'm just not gonna get as much play as somebody be like, "Yo, I'm smacking these hoes," and they they gonna they gonna love them. And that's more us having a image of us. You know, it's not it's not you know necessarily just our fault, but we need to step up a little bit. So that's why I think about black comedy. And um, some reason, black people think, and and they say what you just said earlier. It's like they think if they don't know you, nobody knows you. Yeah. And 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 that's not true. I mean, I got. I got about almost three million followers. So, right, right. Yeah, so I, that I mean, it's just I'm in a certain lane. You know, you know what I'm saying certainly, if, like Public Enemy, if that's making me old school, it's not going to be in the same lane as Panda. Yeah, you know, you know, he's doing. Idiot. And that's a song, <laughs> as, as opposed to fight the power and lift us up. And black folks need to lift us up and love ourselves. You don't got to hate everybody else, but we love ourselves more. So it's like, uh, you know, it's they, so automatically public enemy is not known. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's right. like that's how the younger audience thinks. And I think we need to get that together and do a little bit more research. But, I mean, right now, Comedy Watch for me is real up and down. Like, one minute I'm killing it, and the next minute I'm, like, trying to figure things out. And even with my following. So, Dude, I was, it, I was it, telling you. I was telling Renee, man, I, I sat here yesterday and I watched this entire like hour long interview you did a couple years ago. Uh, what was it uh, Black Hollywood or what, what was it? Urban right. Hollywood? Yeah, Black. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, I did that. It was weird. I did like eight interviews in a row. I don't, I don't know where out the blue I was getting called because I, I manage myself and I, I, I've been lucky. I'm doing OK. I'm doing pretty good yeah. on, on my own. But um yeah, I, I remember. I know. I remember that one distinctly because yeah, I watched um, the whole the thing, man. And was mad at me. Producer <laughs> got mad at me. Nah, I mean, I watched the whole thing. I, I'm, I'm, and I text her immediately. I'm like, this dude think like me. You know what I mean? And you, this, this, and like the part I really liked was you naming everybody. <laughs> like, when you was like, yeah, Arnie S J stole my, he stole my bit, and then right after I did the same damn bit and said that came from. Him. I was like, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, because a lot of these cats, you know, I mean, but like, you know. Right now, with black folks, and just in general, you know, we need to really embrace ourselves a little bit more because we're not getting embraced the other ways. I mean, Donald Trump proved that. Yeah. Donald Trump proved that yeah, for the people that was sleepwalking that, hey, you see it's still going down. Right. You know? Right. Because look at his followers. They they look like they, they half retarded. I mean, they don't, the truth don't mean nothing. They sitting out, they out in the sun eating paint chips. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They walk around licking windows. They are insane. So, you know, like, black people, I just don't like them. I don't want them in my country. Make America white again. That's all I mean, it they is. They're saying that. That's yeah, all so, it is. Yeah, and they say it that way. They'll make it white again and make it white. And it's got to be white. You're ridiculous. You know? But then they, dance, then they dance to our music. It's like, come on, man. He's comedian make, actor. Make actor make Shang uh, at comedian Shang on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and when you when you were talking about about comedy, um, I can only relate it to so many other industry like 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 the, the sports media industry, um, and how you have to fit into a certain mold for 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 you to be accepted. Like um, when I heard you when I heard you speaking, I thought about myself, and I'm like, I tell people like I do this show the way I do it because. It's not going to be like nowhere else is going to be done like this. Like if something's going like to, to start the show today, I ran a four minute clip of James Earl Jones reading a Frederick Douglass speech on the 4th of July. This is a sports show, B. No. Where's you going to get that at? Yeah. You understand? Yeah, I mean, you can mix it. Yeah, because we, we're multicolored. We're right. Multifaceted. And we can we can talk about. I love sports. I'm, again, I'm, I'm a huge boxing fan. I'm a huge UFC fan. But. I, I mean, I love basketball, football not as much as I used to. 
Um, I used to love football, but now I just, you know, I just, I'm just not as into it. I think basketball right now, the finesse it takes for basketball. Yeah. And, you know, and the individual effort compared to football. Because if you look at Seattle, Seattle didn't win that um, Super Bowl because they didn't let Beast Mode run that in. Right. Beast Mode was averaging 1.5, you know, yards a carry. They were one, you know, yard out. And you don't give it to the one dude that has been carrying you on your back. So, whereas in... I think with basketball, if one basketball player decides I'm gonna take this over and hit like three, four points, five points, or you got, you know, LeBron who said, you know what, I'm gonna start pinning people against the glass. Yeah, just I getting busy. It up, getting it busy. And he did, man. I, 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 I watched the game, and uh, I'm telling you, uh, I think LeBron. If LeBron didn't win the game necessarily, I mean, he kept them. He's the reason they one of the reasons they won. But I mean, it was other people. In the game, who you, like that three point shot was just a, a dagger. But the Kyrie shot. I, I, I talk Kyrie. about this dude in a situation where, like, when you say like he didn't win the game, but I think you see guys bring their play up to his level or try to reach his level because he's that great. You know, like you see that dude chase down Andre Iguodala and pin his junk to the to the to the uh, to the backboard. Of course, now that you a, that was a great yeah. great play. Now, if I'm Kyrie, yeah. I gotta do something. Now that dude just did that. <laughs> what I need to do something. You know what I mean? I need to do something. I need to pull my pants down. Right. Let the ball swing. We gotta, we gotta get it in. I mean, like I'm just saying, like, for, like to me, I, that was one of the best. Like I've never seen that before. I think then it wasn't it like in the history of basketball. Nobody's come back. That's what I mean. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. It. Nobody, nobody in the finals. Nobody's ever come back from three one down. That is true, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the history of basketball. So the, 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 my thing is, um, you got to give him props. And did you see how Cleveland came out? Did you see the people when, there's like, a, they went home? There's a million people, that was dude. crazy. There's a million people was out it? there in them streets. Yeah, a million. <laughs> they, like, uh, like, yeah, cat, so, like, dude, I, cats didn't even have to go to court. Like, if you had to go to court that day in Cleveland, they postponed your court date so you can go out and get it in with the Cavs after they won. It was that yeah, serious. I mean, that's – it was that serious. But, like – I look at, like, I actually treat comedy sometimes like a sport. I treat it like a sport. Um, you know, you got to do reps by your reps. Your reps are getting up on stage. Trying yeah, to I want to ask you about again. that, man. Like, like you know? talk, talk to me about your writing process, man, because, like, I, I'm the type of dude, like, when I see people do something and they're, like, killing it and making it look easy, I'm not the dude that says, man, psh, I could do that. I'm like, man, that must be a lot harder than it looks and that dude has mastered what he's doing. So yeah, talk to me about like especially your writing process because you get kind of, you get political. It's not just about like, man, man yeah, my baby mama was doing this and my, you know, when I went to the store yeah. I got robbed. It's like some some thought-provoking stuff like so what is your writing process like? Um, I look at newspapers, I mm -hmm. look at online, all the information that's going down. I talk to black folks in the streets, I talk to not just black folks. I don't want people to think I'm just like sitting around hating everything <laughs> white. I mean, like, oh, this dude don't even like, he don't like Shamu because Shamu got white. You stupid. Like, <laughs> stupid. Like, you know, just like that kind of, I ain't that crazy. You know, I'm like, oh, look at these, which white cheeks, I ain't. You know, but uh, I just think that um, I, I, I have to do a little bit more research. I can't just be like, me and my boy was kicking it and then the joint fell in my lap. I yeah. Can't, I can't do that. I got it because of the type of stuff I do. But um, it, for me, I got to literally take time out the week um, and sit and write, and then I kind of finesse it when I get on stage. But I, I really do have to do research because I, if somebody checked me, be like, "That's not true," I got to be able to back it up with, "Like, yes, it is." You know, if, if I say if I say black folks invented a lot of stuff in America, I have a bit about black inventors. So if I do that, somebody can't come up and say, "No, he didn't invent that." Right? You can't do that with me. Or if I say something about Obama, if I say something about you know, police brutality. I got to back that up. I yeah. can't just be like, if I say police kill more black folks than any other race, I got to be able to know what I'm saying. So, I mean, my main thing is is the research. But at the end of the day, it can't be like so preachy, you ain't funny. I want everybody out there listening. Bottom line is, I go for the joke. Don't get it and twisted. Look, I try to, that, that's, what I wanna, that's, what, just, yeah. that's what I want to get at, like that balance, man, with, with, with you bringing – when you bring in the knowledge that you're bringing and people are coming to laugh, but like, like with me doing my show, I always say stuff is going on outside the world of sports. And for you to right. bring that, like the last couple of weeks, terrorist attacks, cats shooting up clubs in Orlando. Like, how do you bring 
those type of things into your set and make them palatable for people? That's the that's the hard part, man. Sometimes yeah. it, I mean, don't get it twisted. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. Sometimes, uh, but I mean, I'm real. Cons- I've been real consistent for years. I'm, I do better most of the time. I rarely have bad sets because I do so much prep. So by the time I'm ready to do my set, you know what I'm saying? I'm uh, I know how to shift gears. Like, oh, that joke ain't work. I shift gears. Go to another joke. I know what that. Was. Okay, that didn't do well. Now what I, I know I got to shift gears over here. I got to make sure that this mm. works. So, um, I, and I'm not trying to be cocky. Anybody out there listening, I, mean, I rarely have bad shows. I rarely have bad shows. Um, I mean, I might have a fair show or a show that I hate. Yeah. Uh, but because I've hated some of my shows, but I mean, at the same time, I really do try to put the work in. Now, some of it has paid off for me. Some of it hasn't. You know, so I've gotten some clubs that'll ban me. As, you know, a little too edgy, and I get that. You know, they say I'm, a, I'm too edgy, or you know, one because I called Fox News a, you know, a, a bag of assholes. Um, <laughs> and they just like they have, they a barbecue bag of assholes, and they just make shit up. They just get <laughs> on my nerves. Ridiculous. Like, no, I'm just saying. I don't know where you could buy bags of assholes. I don't but either. And get them barbecue sure too. They are, and they barbecue. <laughs> right. It's the holidays before they they. they Fox News is, uh, uh, if you could barbecue a whole bunch of little assholes, that would be them. So I, I said it, and people get offended, and the owner was a Republican. Last time I worked that gig, oh my God. That was, they went, well, you won't be back. Here's your check. I'm dead serious. His name, I'm not. It's Bert Haas in um, El Paso, Texas. Not Bert Haas, I'm sorry. Bert, what is Bert's last name? Bert Haas out of Chicago. That's a different one. Bert Haas book, book me. They let me go buck wild. They, they let me do my thing. There's, um... What's, it's El Paso, Texas. <laughs> He's comedian, yeah, yeah. actor, and activist uh, Shang online at IamShang.com. Um, when is the joke over? I, I remember I was talking to Guy Tory one time. Guy Tory does my show every now and then. And he, he made this comparison with like having to keep the, the material fresh because like somebody can go to a Jay-Z concert and expect him to, 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 to hear all his old songs. But you come with a joke too many times. And people start getting restless and trying to, you know, heckle and boo. We already heard that one. Like, so when, when do you know a joke has run its course? Like, if you're still doing like, you know, Michael Jackson dance like this, <laughs> that joke, you need to retire that joke. But um, what I do is I write stuff that can, I mean, like I write more issue oriented stuff. I talk about racism, sexism, chauvinism, capitalism. So it refreshes um, itself, actually. Yeah, so it, it, re- it refreshes itself. Like, a year from now, they're still going to be racist. A year yeah. from now. So I could do the joke for a while, but I just change it or tweak it or, um, you know, something else will come up, like like you said, with the, the dude flipping out. But, I mean, that's even questionable down in Orlando because they said that – I just saw a report that said that um, the FBI re- released that there was no one killed before 5.15 a.m. But the, the witnesses, which one of them found out they were fake – uh, it was uh, hired by Fox News to just make it seem like, hey, it's the Muslims. Um, it's the, it's the um, you know, it's ISIS, and it really, you know, wasn't the case. It was a gay dude that was frustrated by his gayness. Mm. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm, with me, I, I, I do, I have some jokes I've been doing for a while, but I also got other jokes that, you know, I, I kind of, I got a good balance now. But, I mean, it's still, don't get, don't get it wrong, I mean, uh, I've had people request jokes like me and my girl came to hear you talk about <laughs> right. the nasty cookie man. There was a joke I did on BET on comic view on my special literally 10, 15 years ago. Wow. All right. I've been doing it 23 years. They, they were like, we came to see the nasty little cookie man joke. You didn't do the nasty little cookie man. We wanted you to do it and, and asked me to do it off stage. I'm like, I ain't your little private comedy monkey. I ain't gonna just start. Isn't that you weird? Know, I always okay. wonder about that with you guys. Like, people just, hey, funny man, say something funny right now. Say <laughs> funny something. Man, you see I'm at the abortion clinic. Why are you doing, like, <laughs> what the hell? you gonna talk to me now? Like, come on, man. I know the baby's going away. Come on, come on, come on. Damn it, joke. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm at a funeral. Man, come on, be funny. Like, yeah, I mean, I get that sometimes, but I, I don't get mad. Some comments get mad about that. I get it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. I, I don't even, I've never gotten mad at, like, even audience members. I used to, when I was younger, I'd want to hit them in the head with a shoe. I would, I'm, I'd fight an audience member. I was crazy 
is cat shit. That was <laughs> something wrong with me. But but now now I'm more like you know I get it. You know you, I'm more tempered. You know I'm more like okay I, I get it. Yeah. And when people get offended by my act, which they do a lot, don't get it twisted. They, they I've gotten people offended. I, I the, it's funny. I said abortion. I did a joke about a drive through abortion clinic. And, uh, like, you know, like, maybe they have one lane where you get burgers in another lane. And I was doing, <laughs> it's a horrible joke, and it's it's horrible mean, and I'm like, hey, you don't really need a Happy Meal uh, there. They can keep the toy. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a, that's a wretched joke. But I knew the joke, right? And and I get people that be like, I, I know you didn't say that. I can't believe you said that. Like, I get that a lot. See, I, uh, I get a lot of people that... I got this theory, man, that, like, look, man, a joke is a joke. Now, you can say it's a bad joke or it's not funny, but a joke is a joke, man. And the people nowadays can't laugh at each other. And that's what I want to ask you about. Like, the like now everything has to be so politically correct. And I've heard comedians, like, I've talked to, like, Guy Tory and, and, and Steve Wilson, guys like that, and they talk yeah. about the, you know, that, that tightrope that sometimes you have to walk. Like, my, one of my favorite acts is Bernie Mac with the, with the milk and cookies that... <laughs> And he, he, this dude calls a five year old a fag. <laughs> Imagine him doing that yeah. today, dude. Imagine uh, that be happening. Like, uh, Bernie Mac called a child a fag. <laughs> right. Uh, we're canceling all of his shows. We're taking his TV show off Everything. the air. <laughs> and we're going to put him right next to the bin and with Bill Cosby. I mean, <laughs> You're and, ridiculous. You know, I mean, yeah, but that type of thing. I, I, I totally get it. But I think with me, is um, I'm at a point now, luckily, where. If you come to my show, you know exactly what the deal is. Yeah. So if you come to my show and you do that, and I've had people, I had somebody walk out on me Tuesday. I had some people, because I, when I started doing some stuff about um, Trump, and I had one guy threaten me, and I told him, you ain't at a rally now, you ain't got your back up. I'll, I'll stomp your mouth. <laughs> I'll stomp your mouth and rape your woman's face. I, hey, so I really ain't that dude. And then he was like, well, I'm just disgusted. I said, well, you, you know. Look who you voting for, and then he walked out. So I mean, I don't, I don't play that. Yeah, that's like, that's weirdness, dude. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm too old to be fighting in the street. That's silly. I need to stop it. But um, my my main thing is is just like you know, you came to a comedy show, right? It's not a, it, and if I I just have to be a comic that talks about issues. If you don't like that, uh, tiptoe your ass out. And ask for your money back. Yeah, I've heard I've heard Paul Mooney say the, the show don't start till a couple of white people walk out. So whatever. Um, yeah, a couple more. I got, for Paul. I got a couple more minutes with you, so I also want to ask you about um, something that I heard you mention. You you talked about your 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 selling out phase, and again, that's something that kind of kind of registered with me too. Like doing this, man, it, it was hard for me to try to find my voice. You know what I mean? Like I knew I could do it, but the the powers that be. They don't look like me and they don't they don't come from where I come from. They don't have a perspective that I come from. So they expect a certain thing and you try to give it to them. So I was wondering when I heard you talk about your your sellout period, what exactly you meant by that? And like, like what's an example of like a sellout period joke for Shane? I'm just doing um, doing jokes that um, are easy. Black people, and white people dance different. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, hey, like you've heard that a thousand times. Right. You know, and to beat your kids. I'll beat your kids. How many beat, beat, beat your kids? And, you know, it's like when you hear that over and over again. And so that's why I try to write a joke. I'm like, I, I've been writing stuff about religion now, too, about the fakeness of mm -hmm. some people that are religious, that are really fake. And um, and and so I, I think that the main thing right now for me is, you, hey, I, I've been doing it, doing it too long. The business can't do nothing else bad to me. They haven't did so much bad to me. I'm like, listen, I, this is what it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'll give an example um, with Prince. Um, to me, Prince, had it seemed like he had an attitude like, this is my shit. And you come to listen to my type of shit. I'm right. not going to play what you want me to play. I'm going to play this type of stuff. I'm going to come up with a song that I want to play. I'm going to have a song called Erotic City, and I'm going to play it the way I want it. I'm going to play, this is another song called When Does Cry. I know you don't know what that means. But this is what I'm putting out. Right. And I mean, and that attitude, I, lo I love that. I love seeing artists like that. So if you said it, and what I did was I was basically doing jokes that I knew the audience that were easy mm. for the audience to um, get. I still got some easy jokes, don't get me wrong, through my whole set. I mean, I got a lot of material, but um, 
I, like you said, I couldn't find my voice. And, and I think that watching how it's going for black folks right now, watching how society has changed, watching how Trump has come into power and his, um, half of America or a part of America seems to be bought into that, it made me go back to my, my true voice, which is like if we was kicking and be talking about something, I really talk like I'm talking to you. Right, right, good, man. Yeah, I, I, yeah. That, that's, that's, it took a minute, it took a minute. And, and and that's that's how I try to approach my situation. Um, run out of time here, but I want to make sure I give you an opportunity, man. What you got going on? You coming to the A anytime soon, man? I want to come, you know, support you. And... I, I was there. I, 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 damn, I was damn there. It. I'll be there in October. I was there like two months ago. All right. Well, I told you ain't that far away. What, what else you got going? on? I know you writing and you 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 producing stuff, and I know something's going on. Yeah. You gonna be in a movie no, no, like got, you know, got, fifteen um, years of slave featuring Shane? What's going on? No, no, I ain't gonna be. No, we got enough slave movies. Um, <laughs> If I see one more slave movie, I'm 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 gonna really I'm gonna smack somebody. It's just a, it's what is it? Fifteen years of slave, the butler, the maid, the, the help, the cook, the, <laughs> the, the Negro in the hallway. It's just like you stupid. You, you know, stupid. I'm, just, I'm tired of it. The, the, the new movie, The Brother with the Mop. I'm like I'm tired of it. I'm just like so I don't I'm not. But I got um I did an hour special called Shangri that we but um we shot in New York in front of like um, three thousand people. And it came off real strong. I'm going to be um, releasing that in the fall. I'm going to, uh, I, I just did Gotham Live with Sinbad, which was kind of cool. And um, I got a show called With the Brain Bitch. Uh, I know it sounds crazy. It's basically uh, making fun of people. Wait, what is it called? Um, with the Brain Bitch. With, with the Brain Bitch? With the Brain Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's basically saying, I mean, you know, you can call me a nigga, a monkey, whatever, but I'm a monkey with a brain, bitch. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm with I, it. I, I got you. I got you. I got that. So um, we did that show, and that show did real well. So I'm, I'm coming out with that. And, um, you know, I, I'm still just producing my own stuff. I'm doing a Democratic convention, um, which is kind of cool. I'm doing that. Yeah, that's like, ill. Uh, doing a half, three weeks. I'm going to be performing the Democratic convention. Then I'm doing another show with Bahamadia, myself, uh, Keith from Up the Block, which is a real popular comic in Philly. And it's going to be a political show. Um, we're doing it in the theater. It's going to, it's going to, we're going to sell that theater out and make sure that people come get some knowledge. Um, and be and funny. Like, everybody listening, end of the day, I'm still a comedian. Right. I ain't going to be up there preaching to you like, you know, like, what about God? <laughs> no, I'm going for the, you're going to laugh. You know, a little bit of snot going to come out your nose, know, a little bit of pee. You know, I'm trying to make sure a little bit of pee come out. Damn. Like, uh, you know, yeah, I want you laughing. That's that like, real funny. Did I pee? Yeah, that real funny. Did, he, did I pee a little bit? I think I did. <laughs> yes, I did. I peed a little bit. I want them to pee a little bit. So, um, uh, bring your depends because that's how that's how I'm going. I'm gonna hit it on stage. So, I'm um, doing Philly. Actually, I'm doing Philly July 27th um, at the Freedom Theater, and then I'm also on that Tuesday. I'm doing the Democratic Convention in Philadelphia. And then I'm doing uh, uh, a club called Magoobie's, uh Comedy Theater in um, Baltimore that weekend. And then um, Chicago. Working. So I'll be in Chicago. And then, then yeah, I'm doing yeah I'm doing a play club called Zanies. I'm doing a week. I'll be there for a week. So I'll be there from Tuesday till Saturday, the last week of uh, August. And then um, produce this other show um, called Awareness. And we're going to put it out there. Um, of how many people, people think, oh, it's a show about giving awareness. It is, but it's a show about how many people aren't aware of what's going down. Yeah. It's more like, like you'd be stunned at stuff that's happening in the world right now. Nobody knows. We don't know about. Yeah. And so I'm going to skew it towards the, um, you know, the BET audience and see if, if, if BET buy it. If BET don't buy it, I'll take it right over to FX. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as it, but I want BET to start um, kind of stepping up. More thought-provoking programming. Platform. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, nah, yeah. I mean, entertaining. Got to be entertaining. Right. Uh, I don't want. I don't. I don't want to sit there and be like lecture to either. I don't want to be like, all right. I know. I know. Yeah. One of Damn, my. I know. One of my partners told me this about 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 my gig about what I do. He's like, yeah, you can tell people the truth. Just make sure you make them laugh about it. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, people want to get offended real easy. But, you know, you tell them the truth, but make sure you make them laugh a little bit. And it, it'll come through a little bit more. It's like it's like one of those gel pills that you swallow and it goes down much easier than one of those big-ass horse tablets. Yeah. So I definitely yeah. I definitely feel where you're yeah, coming you from, man. you got to put a little sugar on top of it. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to put a little sugar on top of it. 
And yeah, but anybody out there, definitely check out my website, I am Shang.com. Um, but the main thing right now, you know, social media is king. So get at me on the Twitter, Comedian Shang, Snapchat, Comedian Shang, and Instagram, same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Comedian Shang, I figure keep it consistent. So, you know, I'm, I, I guarantee anybody come to my show, I guarantee, and this, our comics be making, you know, you know, bragging or to be on a Floyd Mayweather, but I'm telling you, guarantee you will absolutely positively laugh. That's my you, man. You will not leave and go, oh, man, he made me laugh. Oh, he wasn't funny. That ain't going to You may not like what I'm saying. That is true, but you're going to laugh. That's life. Hey, yeah. dog, I appreciate you so much for doing this. You don't understand me. I, I love talking to you dudes, you comedians, man, because, like, it ain't just, like, come on and be silly. Like, we have, like, real dude conversations, man, and in the meantime, like, some funny stuff come out, but it's, like, real conversation, man, and, like, with you and, and Rodney Perry and Guy and, 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 and the other guys I've had on, man, it's just real good conversation, man, and that's what I try to bring to the people, and I appreciate you for doing it. Thank you, man. I oh, know. Thank you. Thank everybody for listening. Keep supporting Mike. You know what I'm saying? And then share it. Like, I just retweeted your tweet, and I just sent you a Facebook ad. Look at you. Look I'm going to retweet. You. And anytime you got a tweet, you include me in that tweet, I'm retweeting your tweet to all my people. Love and is I love. Got almost 200,000 people. So, I'm, I'm a, everybody. Every time you do it, you'll see me retweet your stuff. So, oh, and that's real. I've already did it just now. I'll do it again. Love is love, man. I appreciate you, man. Enjoy the rest of your. Of, of your and their <laughs> Independence Day. <laughs> and, their independent, yeah, and their Independence Day. I'm, I'm just going yeah, to watch some more um, UFC and then do some work. Oh, man. Have a good one, dog.